Hey everybody, it's Jim, and welcome back to another lesson of Introduction to Corn Shell. This right here, it's the Unix command ls to list the contents of a directory. And in this directory, we have arrays.ksh and break.ksh. Now, if you want to see how big those files are, you put it ls-s for size. And it tells you the size associated with each file. The reason why I bring this up is that today we're going to lay the groundwork for how you can take a corn shell script and give it a flag to process or a flag that will do something. So here is our script on how we're going to start learning about processing flags. Once again you start with pound exclamation point slash bin slash ksh the name of the program and what I did here was I just said here's the name of the program and here are the f optional flags you can enter X and Y those are the only two valid optional flags you can enter and I gave some examples right here dash X dash Y dash X space dash Y and in this case dash Y X it's perfectly okay corn shell to group flags together one thing I want to let you know though is corn shell only allows single letter flags so you can't go dash new and expect that to be treated as one flag corn shell would treat that as three separate flags it would treat it as an, a dash n a dash e followed by a dash w that's how we, it would treat it and once again it's perfectly okay to use this format dash y x or dash x y you do not have to put spaces in between the flags as in this example here. So this script lays the groundwork for processing flags from the command line. Flags must be one letter long. And I just defined a usage variable which just says that this is the name of the program and these are the optional valid flags. and I've defined a variable called i, I've set it to zero, it's just a counter. So this is how right here we read in flags from the command line. And here's an example of the program if we were to run it. We're calling the name of the program, we're giving it a dash x followed by a q followed by a dash y. And as I said our program is only going to allow an X and a Y as valid flags, so the Q is not valid and we're going to deal with that. Now the get ops command, it's a corn shell command, goes to the command line and it grabs all of your command line options that you entered in. It looks for anything that starts with a dash and this right here says the following. It says that X and Y are valid flags and it says that if you encounter anything, this colon right here, says that if you encounter anything but an X or a Y then that's an invalid flag. Now if you encounter an X or a Y then put that X or Y into flag entered. Now this is a variable I define. You can call it whatever you want. Now if we encounter a bad flag, in other words something that's not an X or a Y, this colon right here says put a question mark into our variable. In this case it's flag entered. So this whole statement right here, it will go to the command line you will see that we have a dash X and it says okay I'm allowing X and Y and I have a dash X so therefore I'm going to put a letter X into flag entered and I'm gonna to go to the next line next line just says increment I by one and then it says print flag and this is I so that was my counter is and then in this case it will be X because dollar flag entered was X 
Now our next line is the same exact thing as right here. Now the way get offs works is it knows enough that if the first time it looked at the first variable, then the second time it's going to look at the second variable. So in this case, the next time we call get ops, it looks at the queue. So in this case, it says get ops, runs the command get ops, it sees that it's not an X or Y, so it's not valid, and it sees that we have our semi it sees that we have our colon here. The colon says that anytime you see a non-valid flag, put a question mark into get into your variable. In this case, it's flag entered. So this command right here, it sees that we entered a Q in as our second variable because this is the second time we called get ops. So it takes and enters a question mark into flag entered because Q is not an X or a Y. We then go down to the next command, which just increments our counter and we then just do a print statement. It says flag, in this case will be two, is dollar flag entered, which will be a question mark. So let's actually run it. So as you can see, flag two is question mark. Now, we're going to run get ops again, and this is the third time we're running it. So therefore, it should look at the third flag entered, which is a dash Y. And getOps takes the dash Y and it says, my valid flags are X and Y. Therefore, I'm going to enter Y into flag entered and just go down to here. We're going to increment I one more time. And then we're just going to do a print statement. Print flag three in this case is, and this will be the letter Y. And as you can see, that's what happened. Now we are going to build upon this. However, I just wanted to show you that the get ops traverses the command line looking for dash flags, flags that start with dashes, and these are your valid flags and if you put a, a colon in front it knows how to handle invalid flags and valid flags get entered into here and if it's an invalid flag a question mark gets entered into here as you can see from our example just one last thing the colon does need to be the very first entry in this field right here. You can't put the colon in between the X or after the Y. It has a different meaning in that case. It doesn't mean that if you have an invalid flag, enter a question mark into your variable.